cash as well as bank so we already understood the cash book and we we have also uh, done one or two question based on the single column cash book so in today's class we will be talking about the double column cash book but before proceeding further in this chapter just wanted to confirm if anybody have any kind of problem relating relating to the single column cash book does anyone have any problem no sir no so i think i have given you this question for the homework right uh, this was the question that i gave for the homework yes or no i'm sure all of you must have completed this question and what about the this question have i given this question as the homework as well did i give this as homework as well i don't think so but i think we uh, haven't completed this question so before proceeding with the double column cash book i think we should first of all discuss this question na however this is pretty much, pretty much similar to the previous question that we already discussed but still let's let's solve this question all right so in this question we need to we need to prepare the single column cash book as the question requires Sim simple cash book we need to prepare following transactions are given in the question relating to march so from 1st of march till the 31st of march various transaction have been carried out in the form and considering all of these transaction we need to prepare the single column or the simple column cash book simple cash book so do, do you think you will be able to able to do able to solve this question guys okay, tell me whether you whether yes. or not you will be able to solve this question yes so 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 why not just let's let's do one thing let's just skip this question if you are able to solve it on your own why not i should give this question as a homework as a homework to you all right will you be comfortable doing this question in the homework guys yes. please confirm if you want me to solve this right now we can solve it here in the class itself or if you are comfortable with the question and I, if i'm going to give you this as a homework if it is okay do let me know shall we discuss this question or shall i give this as a homework tell me sir shall we discuss this because it has deposited in bank all right never mind let's let's get start let's get started let let me solve this question all right never mind so guys first of all all of you just prepare the format of the single column cash book all of you prepare the format of the single column cash book quickly all right everybody so this is the format of the cash book let's start with the first transaction it says mr ganesh lal comes business with cash so this will lead to the inflow of cash right so this will be recorded on the debit side to to capital amount was 65000 after this we have the next transaction on 3rd of march bought goods for cash 6850 bought goods so this will lead to the outflow of cash 
by purchases. Right, everyone. Then pay to pay to Mohan Lal Cash. Pay to Mr. Mohan Lal Cash. Nine fifty. By Mohan Lal. I'm sure all of you already understand that all the outflows need to be recorded on the credit side. All the inflows are recorded to the debit side of the cash book. So pay to Mohan Lal nine hundred and fifty. After this, pay uh, sorry on fourth of March, fifth of March in fact, deposited in bank. So when you will deposit bank deposit cash into the bank account, how it is going to affect on fifth of March? Sorry, on sixth of March deposited in bank forty thousand. So when you will deposit forty thousand in bank, how does it going to affect the cash cash balance? Whether it will increase the cash flow or reduces the cash flow? Tell me. When you will deposit deposit some amount in the bank account, how it is going to affect the cash balance? Whether it will increase the cash balance or reduces the cash balance? Tell me quickly. It reduces the cash balance. Reduces the cash balance, correct? And because it is reducing the cash balance, that means it is uh, there is an outflow of cash cash flow. So we will be recording this on the credit side by bank. All right, and the so amount will be. So we will not record anything related to bank, right? In cash book, we record transaction relating to cash only. Now, so I am not recording anything relating to bank. I'm not see this transaction is affecting the cash cash balance or not? Yes, sir. It is affecting. It is affecting the cash balance. So I think we should just a minute. Wait, wait for a moment. Let me just confirm. I think we should record this. Just a minute.
All right. Uh, um, uh, moving on to the next point. The on March six paid for office furniture in cash for four six five zero. So we'll record it or not? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, I don't have the solution of the question. That is what I'm checking for. As far as uh, I am able to recollect, I think we should record this. Let, let me just solve the entire question once. Uh, then we will verify this with the answer. If if answer does not tally, that means we shouldn't record this. But as far as I am able to recall, I think we should record this. So for the time being, let's just let's just record this because it is affecting the it is affecting the cash balance. And therefore, we should record this. All right. Is that yes, clear? Sir. Okay. So let's do it this way right now. Uh, on on March six, paid for office furniture in cash four six five zero. Four six five zero for furniture. So we will record this on the credit side. Furniture. Okay, and just a minute. Amount was reported forty thousand four six five zero. Six five zero. Then we have the next item: sold goods for cash thirty thousand. Sold goods for cash. So by sorry to sales thirty thousand on the debit side. Then we have uh, <clears throat> paid wages in cash. So by wages. And amount was twelve hundred. After that, we have paid for stationery by stationery, and amount was four hundred. Then we have sold goods for cash to. Sales twenty five thousand. Uh, then on March seventeen, paid for miscellaneous expenses by miscellaneous expenses. Amount was four hundred and fifty. Then received cash from Mr. Tilok. Mr. Trilok Chand received cash from Mr. Trilok Chand. So we will we'll be recording this on the debit side to Trilok. Four eight five zero. Then purchase a radio set. Purchase a radio set, assuming that it must have been purchased on cash. So by radio on the credit side, we will record twenty five hundred. And then we have a paid salary four thousand. So by salary, then paid rent by rent and amount was nine hundred. Then. Paid electricity bill three fifty. Paid by electricity count three fifty. Advertisement four hundred by advertisement. Four hundred and 
after that one last transaction is still left paid into bank 25000 paid into bank 25000 so we are doubtful about two transactions here this one and this one 25000 so we'll have to calculate the balancing figure and then we will be able to determine just a minute let me do that <clears throat> So six eight five zero plus nine fifty. I'm oh, sorry, just a minute. Sixty five thousand plus thirty thousand plus twenty five thousand and four eight five zero. Subtracting six eight five zero minus nine fifty forty thousand. Yeah, even I think that bank should not be included. Oh, anyways, let's let's do it once. Four six five zero, twelve hundred, four hundred minus four fifty, twenty five hundred, then four thousand nine hundred, three fifty, four hundred, and twenty uh, five thousand. So let me just calculate the final value. Yeah, we are getting the right balancing figure. That is, <clears throat> by balance CD. Uh, balance CD is thirty seven two hundred. You can calculate the answer yourself, and your answer should be thirty seven thousand two hundred. The closing balance should be thirty seven thousand two hundred. So that means we need to include the bank transactions here because it is affecting, we are not recording the bank aspect of the transaction. We are only recording the cash aspect. So this, if any transaction is affecting the cash cash balance, so we need to record that. All right, is that clear everybody? Is it clear everyone? Yes, sir. All right, please note this down quickly let me know whenever you're done so total of the debit side is one two four eight five zero and one two four eight five zero Let me know whenever you are done writing this. Sir, the screen is not visible, sir. Screen is not okay. Just a minute. Thank you. 
Done, everybody? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so this is uh, all about the single column or the simple cash book. Now let's proceed to the next topic. Now let's discuss about the double column cash book. Okay. So uh, unlike single column cash book, this time in case of double column cash book, we have this kind of format wherein everything is pretty much similar to the uh, previous format, like we used to prepare in case of the single column cash book. The only difference this time is that apart from the bank column, you can uh, see the, uh, sorry, apart from the cash cash column, we can see uh, bank column is there as well. So this is the cash column, right? This is the cash column. This in this column, we will be recording the transaction specifically related to the cash transactions. Whereas this, this column record the transaction, which deals with the, uh, any, any transaction that is going to affect the bank, bank balance, that kind of transaction will be recorded in this particular section. So this is pretty much similar and, and the, uh, the way we use to record in case of single column cash book, we will be recording the transaction in the same uh, manner here also uh, all the transaction that leads to the inflow of the cash or the inflow of the bank that will be debited to the uh, double column cash book and if any transaction is leading to the outflow of cash or it is reducing the bank balance that will be recorded on the credit side as usual all right i hope the the format is clear everybody yes sir okay so let's do this question to understand the double column cash book. We will be doing this illustration number 15. So this says that prepare the cash book from the following transactions of advanced technology zone for the month of April, 2017. And uh, we have these information given uh, for the month of April. On 1st of April, cash in hand is there. 14,000. So this is basically the opening balance of the cash. This is the opening balance of cash account. And we have the bank overdraft. See, whenever it says we have a bank overdraft, that means this is the credit balance of bank, bank account. This is the bank overdraft basically means credit balance of bank, bank balance. All right, credit balance. What does this credit balance of the, sorry, bank overdraft means? This means credit balance. Sorry credit balance and cash in hand is what this is the opening balance of the cash account that means this is the debit balance of cash then we have wages paid cash sales purchase of goods from rahul 12 250 paid by check in full settlement 12000 furniture pay purchase furniture for cash cash paid to rohit rohit discount received cash sales bank charge interest on overdraft deposit into bank paid telephone bill by check Sold goes for a piece 23500 to Vikas and receive a check in full settlement deposit same day. Paid in real cash for personal use, paid salary, interest collected by bank. Okay. So all these transactions are relating to the month of April. We need to record these transactions one by one in the double column cash. All right. So just a minute. Let me show you how this will, this will be done need to first of all prepare the format of the double column cash book quickly so all of you i want you to prepare the format of the double column cash book and then we will start recording the transaction one by one first of all this is double column
just a minute. So this is the format of the double column cash book. We will start recording the transaction here one by one. So first of all, so the opening balance of the cash is given there in the question. It says that on 1st of April, we have cash in hand and overdraft of 13,214,000. Let's just write this down. Two. Cash balance is 14,000. This bank balance was overdraft. That means bank have the credit balance. So we, we will be writing this as on the credit side by balance. Credit balance of 13,200. All right, everyone, is this clear, all of you? Is it clear, yes or no? Guys? Yes. Tell me now whether it is clear or not, Manisha, Ritika, Ladipa, Zainab. Yes, sir. Okay. Then we have made the next transaction on April 14, wages being paid. So unless until anything is specified, we will presume that we must have paid the wages from uh, by way of cash. So just a minute. by wages wages is being paid by way of cash so we will be writing that in the cash column 1400 right everyone understood is this point clear then we have cash sales on 5th of april and the amount of cash cash sales is 17000 so we are going to record this on the debit side to sales 17,000. Well, everyone, is this clear? Then on April 7, purchase goods from Rahul 12,250, but paid by check in full settlement 12,000. Tell me what amount I should record in the cash. How much amount on which side need to be recorded in the cash? So we'll be recording in the credit side. Mm -hmm. That's right. So and how much amount we should write? Credit credit that is right. 12,000. 12,000. Correct. We will be recording this on the credit side 12,000 by purchases. However, the purchase goes for rupees 1250, but since we are making payment of 12,000 only, we will be recording this on the credit side in which column, cash or bank? If we have pay, made the payment by way of check. Bank. Bank. Okay. Moving on to the next transaction. On 9, purchase furniture for cash. Purchase furniture for cash. 
again on the credit side by in the cash column amount of purchase was 10000 all right then the next transaction so so you are not audible yeah, hello am i now yes sir just now you are audible okay yeah so i was saying that uh, on april uh, 9 we have purchased cash furniture that we already recorded then on april 10 Cash paid to Rohit. Discount received hundred, right? And the payment is being made five thousand. Tell me the on which side of the cash account we need to record this? On the debit side or credit side? And what amount I should record in which column? Tell me quickly. Cash paid to Rohit. On which side it need to be recorded? And in which column it need to be recorded, and in what amount, what amount I should record? Sir, in cash account will be five thousand. Mm-hmm. That is rise right by Rohit account on credit side. In which column? In which column I should record this? Cash column. Yeah, and amount will be. Cash column amount will be five thousand. All right. Going back to the question, moving on to the next transaction. Cash sales forty five hundred. So cash sales. So we will presume that the discount is uh, the payment is being made after the discount. Five thousand is being made after the discount. Okay, sir. What do you want to assume? See, this discount received is hundred, na, and cash cash paid to Rohit five thousand. So we will presume that this amount is received after the discount. So earlier the amount will must have been fifty one hundred. We have received a discount of one hundred, and the final payment being made is five thousand. And if you are asking, sir, what do how do we treat the discount allowed? So discount is not neither it is an inflow nor the outflow of cash. So we won't be recording discount. We will only record the outflow of cash, cash, because the payment is being made to Rahul, Rah Rohit. Sorry, is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Then on April thirteen, cash sales forty five hundred. Cash sales forty five hundred. So we will be recording this on the debit side to sales forty five hundred. Then next transaction, bank charged interest on overdraft. Tell me, how do I record this, or, or on which side I should record this? In which column? Bank have charged interest on overdraft, five hundred. We will record this on the credit side by interest on overdraft. In which column? In the bank column, five hundred. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Then, <clears throat> moving on to the next transaction, it says deposited into bank. Now, 
see this particular transaction is affecting both at the same time cash as well as the bank the amount being deposited into bank means cash is going to be cash is reducing and bank will increase is that is that right this yes sir particular transaction is affecting both the accounts at the same time so any transaction any transaction affecting cash and bank account at the same time such kind of transaction is called contra entry this is called contra entry or contra transaction all right so we how are we going to record this pay attention on 18th we have deposited 7000 into bank account so that means we must have deposited cash so this will reduce the cash balance right so we will write on the credit side by bank account 7000 will reduce from the cash and let me highlight this 7000 is reduced and the same amount will be deposited into the bank account so bank will increase by 7000 on the same day and this will be written on the debit side to cash account you understood this point we will subtract cash and we will increase bank is that clear and because this transaction is affecting the affecting both the accounts at the same time therefore it is called contra entry and whenever you are recording any contra contra transaction you need you need to uh, write c just to indicate that this is a contra transaction contra entry is that clear everybody Yes, sir. It, so this should be written in the uh, ledger column. This should be written in the no. Uh, uh, just like this, that as as I have recorded this, I have written this. You have to indicate this in the same manner to cash account and just to highlight because just to indicate that it is a contra entry. So we will just record, just write this in the bracket C capital C in the bracket. That is it. Got it? Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Then uh, let's move to the next transaction. Pay telephone bill by check. 600 pay telephone bill. So we will be writing this on the credit side by telephone bill. 600 in the bank column. Okay, then let's move to the next transaction. It says sold goods for rupees two three five double zero to Vikas and received a check in full settlement deposited the same day twenty three thousand. Tell me on which side I should record this? On the debit side, obviously. So I'll write down to Vikas. Twenty three thousand is being received by way of check. So I should record this in the on the debit side bank column. Then next transaction, paid rent. Rent is being paid. So if nothing is mentioned, we will presume that we must have made the payment by way of cash. So we will be recording this on the credit side again by rent. And the rent was 800. Yeah. 800. Going back to the question, moving on to the April 29, drew cash for personal use. Drew cash for personal use. Tell me on which side I should record this. Drew cash for personal use on the credit side, right? right? Because it is going to reduce the cash balance. So I'll record this like this by drawings and the amount was 1000 
this will reduce the cash balance back to question on 30th of april paid salary paid salary amount is 2000 by salary 2000 is being paid we will presume that this must have been paid by way of cash one last transaction is left interest collected by bank interest collected by bank tell me on which side i should record this interest collected by bank on the tell me quickly interest collected by bank to interest on the debit side and the amount was 2500 interest collected by bank 2500 all right so this is it we have recorded all the transaction at the respective columns now all we need to do is find out the balancing figure of both cash and bank one by one all right so let's start with the cash first of all so cash balance opening balance of cash was just a minute opening balance of cash was 14000 right then 17000 then 4500 subtracting out of it 1400 then 10000 then 5000 then 7000 minus 800 minus 1000 and 2000 so the closing balance of cash is 80 8300 that is what i'm getting so we'll write this as to by closing balance by balance cd 8300 for cash this is the closing balance of cash now in the same manner we need to figure out the closing balance of the bank as well so first of all on the debit side of the bank column you can see we have 7,000 on the debit side plus 23,000 on the debit side plus 2,500. And out of it, we need to subtract 13,200. Then 12,000, then 500, and then 600. So we are getting the closing balance of the bank is 6,200. Right, everybody, is that clear, all of you? Is everything clear till this point? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So just a minute, 35,500. This will be 35,500 and this is 32,500. So this is it. This was the question based on the double column cash book. I hope everybody have written this down. Anybody is still writing it? Or anyone have any kind of doubt? Anybody want to ask anything? Guys, tell me if anyone have any doubt. No, sir. No doubts. Ritika, Labiba, Zainab, do you have any doubt? No doubts. No doubt, Zainab. No doubt, okay. So this was the question. Let's move to the next questions. Uh, so since I'm already out of time, I'm really sorry because uh, I, I joined late today. And we did only two questions in today's class. Uh, let me give you a few questions for the homework. Uh, kindly take the screenshot of this question. This need to be done on the double column cash book, uh, on the method of the double column cash book. Take the screenshot quickly. Done. done. And uh, let me give you one more question. Yeah. 
question based on the double column cash book is easy you will definitely be able to solve it you won't be having any kind of difficulty solving this question i'm sure take this screenshot if you have any problem solving this question make sure you ask questions in the next class all right done with the screenshot yes sir illustration 9 okay also all right just let's just let's just do only two question i'm not giving you any more question because other questions require some explanation so i'm not giving you any more question so this is it for today's class only two question for the homework all right guys so thank you so much for joining we'll see you in the next class on tuesday till then take care goodbye thank you sir thank you sir bye bye